My name is Jennifer McLeod, and today I'm going to show you how we do atomic force microscopy, which is a type of microscopy that gives us really detailed information about the surface of samples at the nanoscale. This is our atomic force microscope. Let's get started with an experiment. The first thing we're going to need to do is to install our sample into the sample holder. We're going to handle everything with tweezers because the sample was prepared in vacuum and is rather clean. For AFM, our sample holder just has a bit of sticky tape on the base. This keeps the sample stable while we're working on it. Next, we bring it to the instrument where we have to remove the microscope head in order to install the sample. It slides in. We put the head back into position. Secure the cabling. And we're ready to get started. The next thing we're going to need to do is to turn on all the bits of equipment that are necessary. Our first step is to vibrationally isolate the microscope. Atomic force microscopy is really sensitive to vibrations. So we use this active damping stage to make sure that any vibrations are damped out. The next thing we do is to turn on the microscope controller. Next, we're going to use an optical microscope to locate our AFM tip. Now we're ready to turn on the software. As the tip scans, it moves up and down to follow the contours of the surface of nanostructures, and the cantilever is deflected accordingly. The magnitude of this very minute deflection is then recorded by the position of the reflected laser beam in the position detector. Our software lets us see the laser signal in that four quadrant detector. What we can do now is try to optimize the reflection of the laser off the cantilever by moving the cantilever a bit. This is giving us a little better intensity, but we've moved the reflection off the center of our four quadrant detector. That's fine, because we can move the detector a bit too. Now we've got a nice strong laser signal centered in our detector. That's exactly the way we want to start the experiment. We'll do one quick check to make sure everything's operational, and then we're ready to bring the probe close to the surface. Looks good, so we can get started. So I've set us up now so that we have a better view of the laser bouncing off the cantilever. We're going to start approaching the surface, and as we do, I'll explain what's happening. We initiate the approach by hitting the button that says landing. What's happening now is that our probe is staying fixed and the surface is very slowly being brought close to it. As the surface comes closer and closer, we'll approach the range where van der Waals forces will begin to act on our very sharp probe tip. When this happens, the placement of the tip will change slightly. We can measure that with the laser. We've now detected the surface through this very slight displacement of our cantilever, and now we're ready to start mapping the topography of the surface. We do that in a different dialogue. What we want to do is to monitor what our probe sees as we raster it first forward and then backwards across the surface. So we'll set up to acquire data in both directions. We'll start with an image that's 20 microns by 20 microns. Now we're acquiring data. In the optical monitor, you can see this happens by keeping our probe tip still and moving our sample back and forth in a 20 micron trajectory. It doesn't look like much on the monitor to begin with. That's because we have a slope on the sample. We'll do a little bit of slope correction, and now we see the topography of the surface showing up on our screen. Here in the monitor, you can see that this sample has little islands on it. 
It's a silicon sample onto which we've deposited a bit of silver. And that silver has taken on what's called a stransky krastinov growth mode. These islands range in height from a few nanometers to a few hundred nanometers. And so what we'd like to do is try to position ourselves over one of the islands so that we can collect some data about its height and its width. That's where we'll go next. One of the really nice things about AFM is that we can use our optical image to decide which parts of the sample we'd like to investigate. This sample has little islands all over it, and using the optical image, we can choose individual islands on which to make our measurements. In order to do that, we need to reposition the sample underneath the tip. It's a bit dangerous to do that when our tip is very close to our sample. Remember, van der Waals distances are on the order of tens of nanometers. We really don't want to move our sample when the tip is that close. So what we'll do is retract our sample from the tip, pick an island, and then move the sample so that it's positioned under the tip. We can click the fast move out button in the software to move our sample away from the tip. When we do that, it defocuses in our optical image. So the best thing to do is to refocus our optical image so that we can see the islands a bit better. Now that we can see them, we can use these micrometers to move the sample under the probe tip. The probe tip is probably a few hundred microns from the sample now, so it's fairly safe to do this. Once we've found an island we like, we can reapproach the surface and acquire an image of that specific island. That's what I'm going to do now. So now we've found the island that we're interested in looking at, and what we can do is start taking an image. This is a big image, and we're taking it very quickly. So the data are going to show up really rapidly on the screen here, at least for this technique. In atomic force microscopy, we're keeping our probe close to the surface and moving the surface underneath our probe. Those van der Waals forces are going to vary as the topography on the surface brings the surface closer to the tip and further away. We're monitoring those forces in real time and we're keeping track of the topography of the surface based on how those forces act on the tip. Remember, we're reading the tip position with a laser here. We have a very good idea of how the tip is responding to topography. Here, you can see the beginning of our island image coming up on the screen. Atomic force microscopy can be conducted really quickly like this so that we get a very rapid idea of what's going on on the surface. Here, we can see that our surface topography is varying on the order of 400 nanometers. We are reading really incredible height variations at the nanoscale really quickly. As the image builds up, we see what's happened on our surface. We have a silver island here with a rhombohedral shape. This has got a bunch of little decorations on it, which are probably due to the way the silver grew as it was being deposited here. Our background is likely mostly formed from silicon with a very thin layer of silver on it. This is the way stransky krastinov growth works. Once the image finishes acquiring, we'll be able to do a little analysis on it to get a little better idea of what the image dimensions are. We tend to do our analysis in a different software. This is a free software that lets us make measurements of the size of features in our images. For example, we can draw a line profile that goes from the substrate onto the island, and this lets us make a measurement of how high that island is. In this case, it's about 160 nanometers. One of the nice things about microscopy data is that you can have a lot of fun processing the data. There's not a lot of science in making the data look like this, but there is a lot of information in the image when we process it mathematically. We've learned today about atomic force microscopy, which, remember, uses van der Waals interactions to map the shapes at a surface. This is part of a whole family of techniques that can be used to map all sorts of different surface variables. We can map 
potential, we can map other electronic properties, we can map friction. This is a really powerful suite of techniques that give us information into what's going on at the nanoscale. I hope you found what we learned today interesting.